anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, the tariff bill, the Hawley Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work, and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Today, we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? The Laffer Curve. Anyone know what this says? It says that at this point on the revenue curve, you will get exactly the same amount of revenue as at this point. This is very controversial. Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. How'd you like that, Scott? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, class, that was a uh, clip from an old movie called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was uh, Ben Stein, the actor, or an, an economist, was uh, teaching a lesson on the Depression. Uh, I hope uh, these uh, videos are better than that. At any rate, uh, here's the lesson about Keynes and his thoughts on Say's Law. Say's Law is the idea that supply creates its own demand. Any new output automatically creates enough income to purchase all the output. That much is true. It requires further that new saving creates new investment. Because if people don't spend, it would seem as though there's a shortfall in the demand for products in general. And uh, say basically created a link between saving, interest rates, and investment so that the interest rate would ensure new investment anytime saving would increase. That idea relied on the, on the, uh, well, on the idea that households could contribute to the banking system. Households save more, the banks have more, the interest rates go down. All right, Keynes tries to go right to that very point. So I'm using a picture that's uh, obviously from the macro flow diagram, and the same picture occurs in chapter 10, towards the uh, middle of chapter 10, I guess. And we're going to try to see what happens if households save more money. In Keynes's view, it's not as simple as depicted by the relationship between saving interest rates and investment. There's still a mistake. So here we go. Say these uh, incomes here, these, well, it's really wage costs there. Wage costs are 100 million, and wage incomes are 100 million. Okay? That potentially can create enough income to purchase all the output. Yes, it does, and it generates a revenue of 100 million. The economy is functioning perfectly because new output gets purchased eventually somehow down the line. Now, what if households save? All right, let's reduce the 100 million expenditure, the consumption there of households. Let's reduce that by 10%. Let's say households spend 90 million. What about the other 10 million? That gets deposited in the bank. 10 million. Say's law says that 10 million will turn into loans and keep the flow going. Keynes says it's not so simple. In his view, the 90 million is passed to the firm. The firms have bank accounts and they maintain this flow within the banking system. So while the households are depositing 10 and spending 90, 
90 million goes into the banks that way and appears in the accounts of the firms. 90. What's in the household's accounts? 10. 10 million. So there's 100 million in the banks. 90 in firms' accounts, 10 in household accounts. So that's 100 million. But we started out with 100 million. That used to be in the bank's accounts of the firms, and they paid that out by checks. Checks that were, well, nowadays they're directly deposited, but the point was checks that are passed to the households, they deposit 10, 90 comes back into the firm's accounts. So the bank is not really quite as simple. It's, it's, a, it's a more important kind of holder for all deposits, both firms and households. Whereas in Say's Law's depiction of all this, the households are the ones contributing 10 million, and it's as simple as that. Okay, he says, no, no, wait. There's 100 million to begin with, and 100 million goes round and stays within the banking system. Try it again. And I think the point will be even clearer because I'm not sure I've made it satisfactory clear. Say we got 90 million spent winding up in the accounts of the, the firms and 10 million in the accounts of the households. What if they had saved more? Let's say they spent only 80, means of course that 80 million is the revenue. And that amount that winds up in the bank accounts of the firms wouldn't be 90 anymore, it would be 80. Households are saving more, this time 20 million. 80 and 20 is 100. How much are in the household accounts? 20. How much is in the banking system available for loaning? 100. 80 plus 20 is 100. No matter how much households save, the banking system is minding $100 million of flow incomes. Flow money in circulation. That's available to all members of society, all depositors. So, households really aren't adding in net terms, we'd say. They're not really adding more funds to the system. They're just deciding whether they want to keep 10 of it or 20 of it. But no matter whether it's 10 or 20 or 15 or 40 or 8, whatever the number is, the other part of it will go to the firms and they'll keep it, they'll keep that revenue flow in their bank accounts. And at all times, there's 100 million bucks in the bank. Households cannot, households cannot add funds, loanable funds, to banks, to the banking system. All we're really doing is deciding whether we want more or less, and that affects firms' incomes, and then how much they can save or how much they have left to save. So that's it. No matter what you and I do, it's either in our accounts or their accounts. It's the same hundred million running around. So Say's Law again. Say's Law says saving up, interest rates down. Keynes is saying, Saving isn't really higher than it was before. The rate of saving, the NPS is higher than it was before, but the total amount of funds is not the same. So if that's not really happening, then the interest rate can't really change, and the envisioned increase in investment can't really happen. The links don't really work that way. Because households don't really have the power. 
to add funds. It looks like they do. See, there's a fallacy of composition going on here. If I put more money in my bank account, my bank has more money. If you put more money in your bank account, your bank has more money. But that doesn't mean there's more money in the banking system because what would have happened to the dollars that we saved? Had we spent it, it would have gone into a firm's revenue, deposited there, they would have had the money. We're all just passing the saved dollars around because the saved dollars are also the same dollars that we spend with. Money's playing that dual role of a spending mechanism uh, or spending species, they, they tend to call it, and a saving asset. So, uh, it's very simple. It's kind of elegant once you see the whole picture. If you save more, you would have more money. If I save more, I would have more money. But if we all saved more, there really wouldn't be more money in the banking system. That's the fallacy of composition applied here. And that's Keynes's insight into the deficiencies of Say's law. So um, I'm going to quickly show you how that can be seen in the mathematics. Oops, baby. In the mathematics, by using the problems that you have here in the uh, mock test. Real quick, I want to show you something. Number 19, mock test 4. NPC is 0.8. Autonomous consumption is 1,500. Investment is 4,000. Now I'm going to work this out really quick, and then I'm going to change the NPC. I'm going to have the NPC go down so that the NPS goes up, and we'll see we get the same amount of saving. We've done this in class. Although we did it in the reverse order with the uh, change in NPC. 0.8y plus 5,500. y equals 0.8y plus 5,500. In a couple steps, 0.2y, the NPS, equals 5,500. And eventually, y equals 5,500 times 5. Well, how much is that? Uh, 5 times 5,000 is 25,000, and 5 times 500 is 2,500. I'm getting 27,500 for equilibrium income. Let's quick show the total consumption. 0 0.8 of 27,5 plus Uncle Harry's gift of 1,500. That's a five there. That's a five. It looks like a six. It's a five. Uh, sixteen thousand. I'm figuring because eight tenths of twenty thousand would be sixteen thousand. Eight sevens are fifty six. Eight fives are four hundred. So uh, six thousand plus sixteen thousand. I'm getting twenty two thousand. Right. Plus fifteen hundred. Let's see if I can make that better. And uh, I am getting 23,500. 23,500. That's total consumption. Total saving. I hope this works out. Total saving. Y minus C is S. 27,500 minus 23,500. Saving equals 4,000. I equals S. I, 4,000 equals S, 4,000. Alleluia. Alleluia. What if people increased, households, increased their rate of saving? That's all we have the power to do. How would these numbers change? Let's do it quick. 
C equals 0.75. We're saving more. We're spending at a slower rate. Y, yeah, oopsie daisy. Uh, point, point 0.75 Y plus plus 1,500. I, still 4,000. We're spending at a slower rate. We're going to be saving at a higher rate. The MPS is going to go up. C plus I equals 0.75 Y plus 5,500. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go right to the multiplier step. 5,500 times 4. 20,000 plus another 2,500. I'm getting, uh, no. It's going to be 22,000 exactly. That's better. 22,000 exactly for equilibrium and income. Yep. 4 times 5,500 is 22,000. All right, so the multiplier goes down if we spend at a lower rate, right? The MPS in this case would have been 0.25 rather than just 0.2. So we're saving at a higher rate. We're saving at a higher rate. We're saving at a higher rate. What's the total consumption? 0.75 of 22,000 plus Uncle Harry's gift. Uh, let's see. I'm getting 18,000. Right? Because uh, that's going to be 16,500 plus 1,500. Yep, that's what I can tell. So, what's going to happen? Total saving. Y minus C. Do this math yourself. It's it's, who sees it? 22,000 minus 18,000 is 4,000. Regardless of our rates of saving, regardless of our rates of spending, total saving stays the same. On one level, it's got to be equal to I. S equals I. But the more powerful, intuitive level is to see it like this. We circulate dollars, which we spend or save with. So at any given moment, there's X amount of dollars in the system, and we're just passing it around. Every time we spend, we distribute the money somewhere else. Every time we keep it, it stays with us. Someone else doesn't get the income that could have been received because we decided to save rather than spend. That's it. Keep in mind the, uh, the example about the apples in the room, passing the apples around, creating apple income. The idea that I lowered the thermostat and had more money in my bank account, but took away income from PSE and G. And finally, the dancing waters, right? X amount of gallons in the pool. The flow rate can be manipulated and changed, but the amount of water is the same, no matter what. No matter what. All right. So uh, it's not until after this test that you begin to learn how the stock of money has changed and how that really occurs. That's, what, that's how the course closes on money and banking. All right, I'm hoping this is uh, just under 20 minutes so that it can just show on one video. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay.